Hello, my name is Jeffrey Nicholas. I'm an associate professor of philosophy at Providence College. This is a lecture in the continuing series, nine-part series, on Aristotle's virtue ethics. And this lecture focuses on his discussion of friendship. Uh, so as you've seen, we've already talked about who Aristotle was, uh, the concept of eudaimonia, which we'll come back to here in a second, uh, virtue, voluntary action, and incontinence. We also did have a lecture on justice, which we squeezed in there. Uh, so this is technically the seventh lecture, not the sixth, uh, but uh, you can look that up on uh, my YouTube channel there. So when we think about Aristotle's virtue ethics, we always have to think about it in relationship to uh, this concept of eudaimonia, right? And this is the central concept really for ancient Greek ethics, the idea of a fulfilling life, of uh, self-realization as we might say in the 70s, um, but the idea of um, a completeness to life. So we're not just talking about the emotional happiness. So when we think about friends, and it's interesting that Aristotle, among so many philosophers over the last 2,000 years, Aristotle is one of the few to talk about the role of friendship uh, within ethics, and particularly the role of friendship within virtues. And so when we're talking about friendship within uh, Aristotle's virtue ethics, we're not simply talking about emotional attachment, right? Because eudaimonia is not about just this sort of uh, emotional happiness, but it's about living a fulfilled life. And so when we're thinking about the place of friendship uh, in the eudaimonistic life, we're thinking about uh, how friendship helps us to live a fuller life, right? Now, we're also going to talk about the value of study in relationship to friendship. And many scholars uh, debate whether Aristotle thought that we could be happy just with a life of study or whether we also need uh, a life of friendship, which would involve uh, a life of political life. Uh, I believe that uh, we need both of those things, uh, and that becomes important for how we understand what's required for us in terms of virtues. Um, and it's important to recognize these uh, issues because the, it helps us to understand the role of the political state, and here I'm not talking about nation states like the United States or the United Kingdom, but the role of the political state in helping to produce virtue. And so if we were to continue this discussion in a discussion of politics, which is, is being set aside for another time, we would have to begin that discussion of politics with the idea of friendship. Uh, and that, I think, would help us to understand uh, political life much more uh, uh, much better than we do today, and would in fact help us to be more critical of the kinds of things that we call politics today. All of those things are involved in living a eudaimonistic life. Uh, what we want to look at in this lecture is friendship itself. So Aristotle says that friendship comes in uh, three types. Uh, so there's friendships of utility, uh, friendships of pleasure, and then what he calls true or complete friendship. So we're going to talk about each of these briefly and think about uh, what each type is and why each type is important for living a life of eudaimonia. So the first type of friendship for Aristotle is a friendship based on utility. And so this is the kind of friendship where people gain something from each other. They gain some kind of advantage. Uh, we think of, about these kinds of friendships all the time, right? We think about how uh, we have friends of utility, whether they're work friends or they're someone we might ask for a job, uh, mentorship where we get letters from people. Those kinds of, of uh, relationships Aristotle is calling a friendship. Uh, he's saying it's the least like complete friendship. So there's a, an analogous uh, understanding of friendship here. Uh, so this is this is one way of understanding friendship, but it's analogous to what real friendship is, okay? Uh, it lasts only as long as uh, the advantage that we can gain from it. So business partnerships, uh, they end as soon as uh, the business partners stop gaining any advantage from each other. Uh, similarly with uh, mentor and mentee, uh, typically if the advantage has disappeared, uh, then there's no more relationship there, unless it develops into a, a, a different kind of deeper relationship. This is also the kind of relationship in which uh, discord is easy. And Aristotle says, of course, we can avoid that discord through written agreements, but that shows that the friendships of utility are on the shakiest grounds and are least likely uh, what we would consider true friendship. Uh, so you might think about the friendship that we see 
uh, in um, the Big Bang Theory and the kind of contract uh, that we have in the character between Leonard and Sheldon. Uh, this, this shows that really their friendship is uh, on a weak basis, right? And it's uh, over the series, uh, their friendship deepens a little bit, mainly because uh, Sheldon deepens as a person. Um, but uh, at the beginning, it's really a friendship of utility. The second kind of friendship is the friendships of pleasure. So this is when we take pleasure in each other's company here. Now, he's not talking, Aristotle here is not talking about, um, you know, uh, the, the the booty call that we might have. He's not talking about kinds of friendships based on sex. He's not talking about that kind of fr uh, friendship. He's talking really about uh, the kind of pleasure we have in being around people who are witty, or uh, who have a lot of camaraderie. Um, so we're, here we're, we're thinking about uh, deeper pleasures uh, that, you know, we enjoy being in the other person's company, not just uh, for some kind of uh, physical pleasure that we may have, might have from the... Uh, again, this is an analogous kind of relationship, uh, so uh, it's not true friendship, uh, but it is longer lasting than the friendship of utility, and it's much more likely to develop into a true friendship than a friendship of utility is. Uh, discord among uh, f uh, friendships of pleasure is small. If we stop taking pleasure in each other's company, if I don't find you witty anymore, then we go away and we come back when you know we feel like being around that kind of witty person again. Uh, so the, in this case, the friendship is based on the value that each person has for uh, the other pe person and the kind of pleasure that they provide rather than some kind of advantage, which might be very fleeting. Uh, so longer lasting, discord is small, uh, and uh, the, the kind of friendships that we might develop over time that might possibly lead into uh, complete friendship. Now, complete friendship for Aristotle is a specific kind of friendship. Uh, so you might uh, know of the saying that, um, uh, I don't think this really originated from Aristotle, but maybe it did, uh, that if you have one friend, you're lucky. If you have two friends, you're blessed by the gods. And if you have three friends, you're a liar. Uh, for Aristotle, friendship is um, between people who are similar in virtue. And so that makes it a very difficult thing uh, to come by, right? Uh, so virtue here, we come back to the idea of virtue as being the foundation of this friendship. And so that's important for the eudaimonistic life, right? So again, we're talking about living a life of self-realization, okay? Uh, these types of friends wish goods for each other. And so when they're wishing goods for each other, not they're not wishing, um, you know, things that we might think are good but aren't. They're actually wishing the real goods for each other, and they, they're wishing that... Um, that the other person is a virtuous person. They help that other person uh, develop in, uh, in his or her virtues. So these kinds of uh, persons are good in themselves in many ways, right? They're the virtuous person, the phronimos that we talked about in the sex, second lecture, uh, someone that we look up to and say, hey, hey, I'd like to be that kind of person. So when we develop those kinds of relationships, that is the, the complete friendship, right? And here, the love that develops between them uh, is a love based on the goodness of each other. So Aristotle says that uh, people who are base, who are incontinent, uh, people who are vicious, they cannot have this kind of friendship. Uh, and that's, I think, important to, to think about and consider, um, given the kinds of things that we, we say see and think about uh, friendship. So if we go back to uh, some of the classical uh, sitcoms, uh, if you look at uh, Friends, for instance, and how the, the different friends here are uh, struggling in their virtue. Uh, some of them may not be as virtuous and what that means in terms of the kind of love that they can have for each other. Uh, How I Met Your Mother, similar sort of situation where we have uh, Ted uh, and Barney and Barney wants to Ted to be his best friend, but Barney really is kind of a base person or at least in the first, you know, eight and a half seasons, he's, he's kind of a base person who doesn't have a lot of virtue. And so the friendship really struggles insofar as there is a friendship. Uh, so Aristotle does say that, that complete friendships are, are rare, and so those are things that we need to, to value, um, and they're part of this life of virtue because they're based on being virtuous, as well as supporting each other in pursuing the goods that are uh, part of the eudaimonistic life. With complete friends, now I think this is very important, uh, there's a desire to live with each other. 
okay? So I want to be with the other person because we share similar goals. We share, and these goals are, are the good ones to have, right? Uh, we share similar ideas about what the good life is. And these friendships consist in loving. Now, it's nice here that Aristotle says it, it, it is better to love than to be loved, right? Uh, so he says, just, just as the mother loves, even if she's never loved in return, a person who, a friend who loves the other, even if he's not loved in return, that's, it's better to be that than to be someone who's loved and doesn't love another person. Um, and then we also know that people who love their friends, these are the kinds of people that we praise, right? Uh, so we uh, praise uh, Ted and Marshall for loving each other um, as friends. Um, and there's no sense that this is a friendship of utility or a friendship of, um, of baseness or, or a friendship of ple just pleasure. There's a deep concern for each other. And there's a certain attempt to live a virtuous life that they have together. Now, in relationship to, to virtue, Aristotle says no one would desire to live without friends. So if we're living a eudaimonistic life, if we're living a life of true self-fulfillment, we want friends to be part of that life. It's necessary for living this happy life. Um, and further, true friendship is the only time when people can share what is truly valuable, and that's why true friends want to live with each other, right? And friendship has its own virtues, and we might think here about loyalty and trust as virtues that are particular to friendship. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that Aristotle takes into consideration uh, when he thinks about friendship in the good life. And I think it's important to recognize the uh, contribution Aristotle is making here to ethics in general by putting friendship at the center of the moral life, but also the contribution he's making to our conception of friendship as being based on virtue and being based on the love of things that are truly good and the value that we find in being with others who pursue those things that are really good in life.